Okay. So let's start. Thanks for joining the session. Uh, my name is uh, Georgi Jakov, and uh, recently I'm doing some uh, kernel development work uh, for Qualcomm. Uh, so this talk is a continuation of the uh, on-chip uh, interconnect uh, talk uh, I gave at uh, Last Vegas at the previous Connect. Uh, so, by the way, who from the audience was at this uh, talk at Last Connect? Please raise your hand. Okay, that's good. Mm, so, here is the agenda for today. First, uh, I'll give some uh, short background uh, on the topic. Uh, then uh, I'll explain what uh, the problem we're trying to solve actually is. Uh, and I'll talk a bit about the proposed solution. And uh, then uh, I'll give uh, a summary of uh, what uh, is the plan for the next steps. Uh, so uh, there will be a hacking session today as well in the afternoon uh, at 3 p.m. So you can join and uh, we can discuss this a bit more. So those of you who were at uh, the my talk at uh, Las Vegas, they remember these diagrams. So uh, what are the interconnects? Most of you probably know <laughs> as you're here. So in the last seven, eight years, uh, the on-chip interconnects and especially the network on-chip concept are becoming, becoming uh, very popular. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, there is a high demand of integration of new features in the SOCs. Uh, each year we have uh, more and more functionalities and uh, the SOC design is getting uh, more and more complex. Uh, now we have uh, various uh, different uh, accelerators, multiple processors, like GPU, video accelerators, graphic cores, so uh, in the SOCs we have many components talking to each other and uh, they generate a lot of traffic. So these uh, processing elements, uh, they're talking to each other and uh, most of the time they're doing this simultaneously. Uh, they can also be idle, so um, Um, so, uh, yeah, the predictability is difficult. Uh, so, yeah, there are many challenges. Uh, uh, the new designs are uh, having a smaller footprint. And, uh, and uh, to integrate all these uh, IP cores, into the SOC it's uh, really difficult uh, because uh, when we have uh, communication uh, it uh, becomes a problem because the memory and the CPU are constrained by propagation delays. So uh, at some point uh, the communication became uh, a challenge and uh, the communication is very important for performance. Uh, so here you can see various uh, uh, topologies. Here we have a simple shared bus with an arbiter. So uh, there is an arbiter who uh, dictates who will use the bus. And uh, uh, here we have a crossbar bus where we have multiple links between 
uh, each of the components, which is uh, actually a good solution. We have uh, links between all the components, but the problem with the crossbar is that uh, uh, it needs uh, some size and we have uh, a lot of links and uh, the links uh, uh, can have uh, longer distance. So uh, this is does not scale very well. And here on the third diagram we have uh, an example for the network uh, on chip concept. Uh, the network on chip um, concept basically uh, we have um, um, we have a decoupling of the uh, transport layer. So uh, we have a packet communication. Um, this is very similar what is what we have in the IP networks today. So uh, we have nodes, which uh, we can call switches or routers. And uh, if we need to reach from component one to component B, we, can we have multiple paths. We can do some load sharing. Uh, the, the, commun the, the communication is packet-based, so we have um, packet header and payload. And in the payload, we can encode uh, things like uh, priorities and various uh, QoS values. So um, this can be more predictable, and uh, it uh, scales very well. Uh, also, uh, it's more power efficient, so we have shorter wires between all these nodes, which are the routers or switches. Uh, the, the transport, um, it's um, here uh, we have uh, shared, uh, shared uh, links, so and this is more flexible. Uh, and uh, also, we can, uh, we if we have some clock here, we can scale it uh, based on the demand on and the requirements. Um, here is a simplified uh, topology from the real world. Um, each of these blocks uh, can be a separate bus, a separate uh, network on chip. And uh, we have uh, here multiple connections between these uh, buses. So um, if you want to reach uh, from one component to another, we have to go through uh, many network on chips. And uh, uh, each of these links, uh, we can set various parameters related to QoS. We can scale these links. Um, and um, yeah, this is uh, just a simple example. It can get a lot more complex with uh, many more buses and uh, network on chips. So here, uh, if we have traffic flowing in this direction, um, we can uh, have interleaved traffic. So. We can have uh, traffic, for example, from the CPU. We can have traffic from the modem, from the GPU, and so on. And uh, this uh, link uh, uh, gets utilized at some point. So uh, we need to aggregate all the requests that uh, come from uh, different uh, peripherals, from, uh, for example, uh, so that we can uh, uh, scale the clocks and uh, scale the voltages. Uh, so that we do not consume too much power, because uh, usually the SOCs uh, are made that uh, they can cover uh, various requirements like uh, uh, high clock speeds, uh, high, high rates for decoding and displaying video, and so on. So uh, if we leave this interconnected some default default or max value it will consume a lot of power so uh, the goal is to have also lower power consumption um, so what the problem is the problem is that uh, currently there is no generic solution of doing this 
Um, there is uh, no specific framework for this, and uh, the downstream uh, vendors are solving this uh, in their own way. Uh, so many uh, SOC manufacturers uh, have their own DVFS uh, implementations. Uh, they have custom frameworks and or just uh, set some clocks and regulators from the drivers. Um, just write through some registers. And uh, as this is getting more and more popular, um, we need some common solution. Um, also the configuration of these uh, uh, interconnects, uh, they can be static, which is done one time at boot, and they can be dynamic, so uh, they can scale with the demand. So if we are not playing uh, 4K video all the time, we don't need uh, uh, to keep uh, higher voltages and rates. So, um, uh, what are the requirements? Uh, so uh, when we have uh, multiple interconnects, we have a topology. Um, so we need uh, to have a description of this topology. We need uh, to have uh, a path between the endpoints. Um, and uh, we need to be able to find uh, a path between point A and point B. Um, and uh, aggregate requests. So currently we are, um, um, the idea is to have um, an API which uh, take uh, requests from uh, consumer drivers uh, and that uh, we process these requests and uh, depending on the requests we update uh, the constraints and set the hardware in the most optimal uh, configuration. Um, and uh, as the topology is specific for each SOC, uh, we'll have a uh, vendor-specific driver uh, which uh, has the internal topology encoded into it and also implements the all the low-level stuff. So the solution, the solution for this um, is uh, a new framework which uh, we call the interconnect framework and uh, a vendor-specific uh, low-level drivers that control the hardware. Um, I have uh, submitted an RFC, RFC upstream uh, with simple API, so which is currently under discussion. Uh, and the idea is to uh, be a it uses the consumer provider model, so we have uh, consumer drivers which uh, request, uh, for example, bandwidth, latency, different uh, QoS settings. Uh, and the framework uh, takes care of uh, finding a uh, path between the endpoints and uh, to aggregate all these requests and set the hardware accordingly. Um, so here is just an example of the interconnect provider, device tree binding. Uh, so currently, um, the initial idea was to have uh, some interconnect ports. So we, and when you have uh, multiple uh, interconnects, they have uh, multiple connections between each other. So we need to express this in some way. Um, one example is to use device tree, but probably will not, we'll see. Uh, which is the simplest solution to start with. Uh, here is uh, an example binding for the customers, um, for the consumer. So in this binding, uh, we currently specify uh, the endpoints of the whole path, so uh, we need to know what are both endpoints. Mm. Yep. No, not yet. They are they are under discussion. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Suggest that just because 
it would get complicated uh, adding another graph to a bunch of nodes because we already have graphs on nodes for like the display subsystem. So then you add the graph for the memory path. We'd have to figure out how to support both graphs. Yeah. Without breaking things. Yeah. So my main concern here is that I think we need to see it with multiple platforms before we try to come up with a yeah. common binding. Um, yeah, the idea is, is that uh, this uh, binding uh, will work for any kind of interconnect. So it doesn't matter if it's a uh, crossbar or some shared bus or network on chip. The idea is to have something common for all these cases and do not depend on any vendor or anything. Right, but defining it creates an ABI and yeah. in other complex cases like power management uh, stuff has gone in and then it's not sufficient and gets changed later and is constantly evolving, which is kind of a problem. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you suggested to start without using device tree, which I also agree with. It's with it's just data, so the data could yeah. be in the kernel and then yeah. when we figure out what's the common parts are, we can pull that into device tree. Yeah, yeah. Agree. Okay. So here is how the API currently looks like. Um, we have a simple uh, get function when we specify some ID. And this uh, returns uh, a struct which uh, we call interconnect path. And then on the interconnect path, we can set various constraints. So here is just a simple example with the bandwidth, but it can be latency, priority, QoS, so we can um, extend this and create some specific interconnect requests. Uh, and then we have, uh, of course, the interconnect put API, which just releases all the constraints and uh, restores the default values. Um, yeah, so here are some uh, restrictions. Uh, currently, it uh, works only with the platform driver. So, for example, if we have to uh, put some constraints on the memory, uh, for example, on the board, I'm currently doing my experiments. So we don't have a platform device for the memory. With so I created some device tree node for the memory controller. Um, so this is a kind of to-do and we need to think uh, more about this. Um. So yeah, we are interesting to get the input of other members. I mean, we are discussing a lot with one member, but uh, yeah, that's one platform and we would be interesting to know what is important for the members what can be done internally. And, and I yeah. don't know if you mentioned that, but we have an hacking session this afternoon yeah. to discuss more deeply. Yeah, yeah I mentioned this mentioned. in the beginning, but uh, I'm saying it again that uh, in the afternoon at uh, 3 p.m. we'll have a one hour hacking session with discussion so we can discuss all this and uh, if there are um, any other interested parties uh, in this, they can join and we can work on creating some uh, common solution for this. Uh, so while uh, um, we are discussing this uh, API um, internally with uh, uh, Qualcomm and uh, Daylibre, um, we did a lot of bike, bike shading and uh, finally we decided to submit this uh, upstream so that we can discuss this and change it, but uh, actually we need some feedback from other people. So um, uh, there are many questions. Uh, here I have a list of the type of constraints. Maybe if other people will require uh, different things. Um, c 
currently um, the constraints of all this above, um, we are storing this into internal data structures, but we have also considered um, using PMQOS actually. Um, I have a version which is using PMQOS as a database for all these constraints. Um, currently, um, there is an open question whether we should need and use the we should use uh, the PMQS API as it is the higher level APR for for setting constraints like latency and so on. So maybe we should extend this one, but we will see on the mailing list. I, d I don't know how putting it behind PMQS would affect us, but uh, there definitely are cases where we want to independently scale memory and clocks um, for the device. Yeah, uh, actually we are scaling only the, the goal is to, s the goal is to scale only the interconnects, not the endpoint devices. So we're scaling only the interconnects and not the. Yeah, so the framework is really about scaling the interconnect, but now maybe that could be a good input for the end device that there is this amount of throughput coming to him or going outside just to help to scale is his own frequency, but that's not the purpose of the framework. So yeah, currently uh, we have only one uh, vendor driver, which is the Dragon Board for TNC. I'm using this as a test platform. Um, and um, I would like to prepare some uh, functional examples which uh, you can run and uh, you can do some measurements and see how the bus scaling uh, actually affects the power consumption and uh, the performance. So, um, so um, yeah, I'm working on preparing this and so that people can run this and see that it actually works. Um, also, currently the version I submitted upstream, it's very simplified and uh, does not contain the whole topology, uh, but only a small number of all the interconnect nodes from the whole graph topology. Um, So what are the next steps? Uh, so yeah, as I, I al already said, uh, we have some RFC upstream and uh, there are many questions open with this uh, RFC. Um, we need to decide whether to use or not PMQOS at all. Uh, we need to remove the dependency on the device tree. Uh, so that, for example, if we have platforms for with ACPI, what what to do in this case? So we cannot tie things to firmware interfaces. Um, uh, the next steps are also to add support for other types of constraints, and uh, uh, I work on extending the current. Uh, interconnect driver with the full topology and supporting various types of constraints. Um, so uh, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or if you are using any kind of network on chip or bus scaling in your vendor trees, I will be happy to know if you use something like this. So um, the hacking session is in the afternoon. You're welcome. You. We'll be discussing discussing this, so it will be in this room. Yeah, I have a question about uh, the graph traversing. Yeah. Is, is it a custom implementation in the this framework? Yeah, it's a BFS search. So we are. Yeah, I'm asking because uh, there is uh, another implementation in the kernel in the yeah. Linux uh, video for Linux. Yeah, yeah, there is one uh, media controller. 
Yeah, exactly. In the yeah. media controller API, there is uh, we also have uh, graph traversals, but they are a bit different from from this one. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah. We need to to consolidate it yeah. implementation. whatever way, what is graphic specific or the scaling specific. But for now, for us, the, for the first RFC, the main goal was really to describe what we want to do if and, if 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 and check that make if that makes sense. Then we probably need to consolidate the graph or maybe with QoS or something else. So uh, I guess the infrastructure is basically consolidating the request from various drivers and then doing what, what the best it could do, right? Uh, so what happens if a driver uh, requests a number and uh, the consolidation changes that number by some factor depending upon other driver's request? So does the first driver get any notification back or w w yeah? What kind of mechanisms do you have? Yeah, mm -hmm. currently we don't have a mechanism for getting any notification back, but this can be added. And when uh, the numbers, the constraints are changed, they are changed in a way that uh, it does not, does not affect uh, any of the drivers in a negative way. So usually they are aggregated. And so we, um, we when we have, for example, a peak bandwidth, we are getting the max value. And yeah, when so we need to sum all the requests, we are yeah, it's so you are talking about performance versus power saving. Some drivers might request a performance-based request, and other drivers might request power saving-based requests. So uh, both of them are conflicting. Yeah, right. So uh, at the end of the day, you actually change something which will definitely affect one driver in a negative way. It's all it's needs. He don't know how this will be implemented. You just need to um, satisfy his requirement. And now it's not planned to say I want to be power efficient or performance efficient. It's just about I need a bandwidth, a throughput. It's up to the platform to decide if we want to be more power efficient or performance efficient. Yeah, I agree. If in some case we can't, um, yeah, that will be more a kind of uh, error, not if not possible. Yeah, for that point I agree. But otherwise we don't, we don't really need that. Yeah, hey, just a thought. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. So let's continue the discussion in the afternoon. I see that there are some questions, so I will be happy to discuss this in the afternoon. So. Thanks a lot for attending.